Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today. We thank you, Lord, because we know you are still on the throne. You remember us where we are. We love you. We believe in you. We believe your word. And Lord, we pray at this time, energize everyone in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. Do something definite. Something spectacular. Something, Lord, that will never forget that this day you met with your people. You blessed your people. Bless us, Lord, today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the furry darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God as you look at those uh, two verses of scripture and you think about the people that have gone before us what they went through where they stood why they stood what they did how they did what they did there's one single thing we we'll think about is the word faith and Hebrews chapter 11 captures everything for us telling us even though people have different callings and different commissions different responsibilities there is one thread that goes through their lives how they did what they did how they were able to endure what they endured how they had courage in the face of trial it goes on and it says it's starting from the first man apart from apart from adam and eve adam and eve had two sons cain and abel one was of faith the other one was of unbelief and starting from abel he goes to noah and from noah he goes to abraham from abraham he goes to sarah and from sarah he goes to isaac and then from isaac he goes to jacob from jacob he goes to joseph and from joseph he goes to moses and then from moses he goes on to the time of joshua how the jericho walls fell and then from there he went to rahab and from there he went to all the other people then in concluding everything what shall i more say because i'll talk of gideon i'll talk of barak i'll talk of samuel and all the other people and then he says at the end of it all that we now have a better heritage awaiting us and you will see that all of them from the beginning to the end there is one common thread among them is that word faith and i want to examine the scriptures with you tonight and thank god you are still awake i said you are still awake i'm examining the scriptures with you on possessing the faith that never fails the faith that never fails look at all the lives of the people i told you about whatever they were among them you'll find patriarchs among them you'll find princes among them you'll find prophets among them you'll find the general people whether they were patriarchs or prophets or people faith among them you'll find men among them you'll find women whether they were men or women you'll find faith among them you'll find the people that were legitimate in the family among them you'll find a person like Jeff Jephthah they thought was not legitimate whether legitimate or illegitimate you find one single thing binding them together and that is faith and then as you also join the line join the queue that's Abel in front Enoch there Abraham there Noah there everybody there and then I join the queue they say what are you finding here on the queue you say I have what you have you have what I have tell me what is that faith is a queue of faith and as we queue up and we say whatever challenges I have whatever commission I have 
whatever goal I have, whatever dream I have, there is one thing that will carry me through. And there's one thing that will carry you through. It is that word faith. Look at that verse again, verse 16. Above all, think about that. He said, put on the whole armor of God. And he mentions them one by one by one. And then he says, don't forget this. All the armors will not work effectively and sufficiently in your life without this. Above all, he said, you've got one, two, three, four, whatever it is. Then he says, beyond all that, on top of all that, and beneath all that supporting everything, getting everything together, is this word faith. It says in verse 16, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, tell me the next word there, all. You know there are some people, they do not believe that they can conquer every problem. They don't believe that they can conquer all the innuances or innuendos or whatever it is, intrigues of the devil. They think, maybe I can conquer this and this and that, but not this. They think there is a mountain so high, they cannot climb. They think there is a sea that is so wide, they cannot cross. They think there is an affliction that is so deep, they cannot overcome. But it says, when you put on the shield of faith, you'll be able to quench, tell me, tell me out loud, all the furry darts of the wicked one. And then it says that there's a shield of faith and then the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm telling you that from tonight, you'll never be the same again. It, it, there is something that comes into you that's called faith. The kind of faith that will never fail. Look at this in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. It says in verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, the ball is in your court. The decision is yours. The responsibility is lying squarely on your shoulder. Many people say, if God can do this, he says he can do everything. It's not a matter of if God can do this, if God can do that. Other people say, if God has predestined me for this, if God has appointed me for this, he says it's not about predestination. It's not about his choice, his decision. It's in your hand. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe, to him who believes. I'm sure you believe. If you don't believe yet, by the end of this message, you'll come into faith in Jesus' name. It says all things, all things, all things are possible. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, because of your unbelief, you know they had asked a question, Why could we, could not we cast him out? I want you to summarize that in your own mind. I want you to look at your life. Since you were born into this world, and say, I wanted this, why couldn't I? I wanted to go there, I couldn't make it, why couldn't I? I wanted to have that, I couldn't, why couldn't I? I remember, I finished school, I wanted this, why couldn't I? Uh -huh. I used to think it's because I don't have the contacts. I don't have the who and who. Because it's not what she know. It is who you know. I used to think I couldn't go there. I couldn't get there. I couldn't have because I didn't have the brain. I didn't have the intelligence. I didn't have the talent. It wasn't my calling. It wasn't my constitution. Why couldn't I? Now tonight, the Lord comes to answer the question why. And if you have, if you have a lot of whys in your mind, why am I not there? Why am I not there? Why am I not there? How is it? A lot of dreams but no achievement. A lot of goals, there's no accomplishment. 
a lot of aspiration there is no accomplishment why why couldn't i why couldn't we you know in our family we said husband wife and children in the new year here is where we're going here is where we're reaching and then june came middle of the year and we take inventory and we say how about this husband said i'm helpless wife said i'm helpless and the children said if daddy and mommy are helpless how about us then they say aha uh -huh, we understand now because you know in our family from generation to generation to generation this is the cause of failure why couldn't we because of this now jesus answers the question for us all the wise in our lives why didn't that happen why didn't this take place why didn't i reach that place why couldn't I have what i dreamt i was going to have how is it all the prophecies in my life how is it they were not fulfilled and jesus said unto them because of your unbelief that's how we came here tonight we're going to sweep all that unbelief away you know once unbelief is cleared out of the way it then says look at this for verily i say unto you that if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove mountains are moving tonight if ye shall say if ye shall say, wait a minute, believers, church members, don't talk to their mountains. They don't say to this mountain, they say to their wife, you are the cause of my mountain. Churches, denominations, they don't teach their people, say to this mountain. They tell their people to discover from generation to generation. The root and the base, the foundation of the mountain. And science doesn't tell you, say to this mountain. Science will look into the encyclopedia of all the knowledge gathered all over. And they will say, actually, in Africa, this is a common problem. In Asia, this is a peculiar problem. And in the West, this is the peculiar problem. They only describe the genesis and the genetics of the mountain. They never tell us, say to this mountain. And then the prophets and the visioners, the people that see vision, the people that will go to, you know, this and that, see vision for me, prophesy for me. They say, ah, I see now. You have a mountain, don't you? Of course, everybody has mountain. Yes, I do. Can I tell you the, the why that thing came? Were you from this such and such a place? Oh, yes. All they try to tell us is, this is where the mountain is coming from. Jesus did not bother about the origin of the mountain. He did not bother about the people that make the mountain to be there. All he wants to know is what you will say. What you will say. And tonight, you change your attitude. And you are no more saying to your wife, talking to your wife about the mountain. Complaining to the husband about the mountain. And complaining to people about the mountain. Come on now, what you are to do? Jesus said... You will say to this mountain, be thou removed. He puts the watch in our mouths already. He tells us what we are to say. And if you say what he said, you will say, you will have what he said, you will have. I said, if you say what he said, you should say, you will have what he said, you will have. I'm making up my mind when I come here. Anytime I come here, I'm going to say what he told me to say. When you have a mountain, I'm not going to be, you know, asking you, how did you get into this? How did you bring yourself into this? The Lord said, I shouldn't ask you any question. Show me the mountain and I say something to that mountain. 
and tonight as you come over here just, just tell me when i say you raise up your hand any mountain there i'll not talk to you i'll talk to the person and the personality and that that, that challenge i need to talk to and when i say what he told me to say i will have what he told me i will have that mountain will go away it's going tonight in jesus name then it said it shall remove and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing i didn't hear you uh, before i go on I, I want you to think about it now what if you are planning to go to college and then the professor told you come on fill this form submit it if you submit this form no matter what course you choose nothing shall be impossible for you what if a director of a company called you and he said where are you working now then you say this is where i'm working and then he says how much are they giving you they say this is how much they're giving what doing all this this is what they're giving you come on now feel this from here and come over to this other company and you name it and claim it whatever you name you claim nothing shall be impossible and if you want to write double of what you are getting out triple what you are getting out nothing impossible if you knew that in the journey beginning tonight you could not fail if you knew that in the journey you are starting tonight nothing shall be impossible unto you what kind of dream will you have what aspirations will you have what desires will you have what plans will you have the Lord is putting you, is putting your hand a blank sheet of paper tonight. And he says, write what you want. Desire what you want. And then put it down. And then come to the Lord because he tells you tonight, nothing. Everybody say nothing. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. I even thought, I thought I'd done something since I began the Christian race. But I'm just discovering now, what will I want to be? And I see all these great men of God that has achieved something. And the Lord is telling me, what do you want? What do you want? You're not too old yet. You're still very young. You're still younger than Moses when God called Moses. What do you want to start that you have never done? And I say, Lord, it's this. It says, write that down. I said, Lord, I've not finished. It's this. As I'm writing my own, are you writing your own? I said, are you writing your own? He told you you'll be head, you'll not be tail. Have you written that one? He says, God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Have you written that one? He said, no weapon that is fortunate against you shall prosper. Have you written that down? He said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Have you written that down? He says, whatever you pray for, when you de whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you have got it and you will have it. Have you written that down? And then he says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and not Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Have you written that down? And he tells you, he'll give a stranger's charge over you. That he'll keep you every way. You'll not dash your foot against a stone. Have you written that down? And then he said, affliction will not come upon your life. The second time, have you written that down? And then he says, whatever you write, everything I've said, and on top of it, whatever I've not said, he says, nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. I think you can rejoice. I said you can rejoice. The day of your joy has come in Jesus' name. Possessing the faith that never, never, never fails. How does that faith come? That's what I'm interested in. How can I have the faith that will never fail? How can I have the faith that carries power? How can I have the faith that carries divine authority? Point number one. The faith that comes by the word. The faith that comes by the word. Can I tell you something? Everything that you are today came by the word. The language you have learned is by the word. The ideas you have is by the word. If you didn't have words, you'll not have any thought, any idea, 
any plan, any aspiration. You have to put those words down. Even the knowledge of salvation we have is by the word. The hope of heaven we have is by the word. And then the fears we have is by the word. You wouldn't have any fear on earth if somebody didn't tell you something. The fears we have, they come by the word. That is, by the words people speak unto us. The suspicions we have is by the word. The weakness we have is by the word. Anything you have, positive or negative, up or down. You are short, you are tall. You are sick or you are whatever. Even the name of the sickness, how do you see somebody told you? Everything we have, we have it by the word. What if then I concentrate? And I said, there's, you know, we used to learn when I went to school, they used to teach us Latin. All those conjugations. And they wasted our time. And we learned Latin, Latin, Latin. And today it's a dead language. What if I spend that time learning Latin? What if I spend that time learning the promises of God? I would have been taller than I am today. All the things they will tell you wasted. Learning this. You know, there are people that will hear whatever will bring fear in their heart. They are hearing and hearing. And then the fear is diminishing your stature. What if you stopped and you said, that one is Latin. That one is Greek. And nobody is speaking Greek aloud here. All the words I hear that bring suspicion. All the words I hear that brings hatred. All the words I hear that brings fear. All the words I hear that brings affliction. I'm going to pack all that aside. You know, I stopped learning Latin when I discovered it's a dead language. And now I'm reading the word. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? By the word. Look at that in um, Romans chapter 10. If you want faith to come, stop hearing what brings fear. Stop hearing what brings suspicion. Stop hearing what brings hatred. And be concentrate your time. Concentrate your life on hearing what brings the faith, the faith that never fails. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then, Faith cometh. And I'm asking, what kind of faith? Oh, it says, every kind of faith. Faith cometh. The faith of Abraham. How did that come? By hearing. God spoke to him. His faith came by hearing. The faith of Moses. The faith that was able to bring water out of the rock. That faith came by hearing. And the faith of Joshua. That spoke to the son. Hey, son, stand still there. I'm on the battlefield. And that kind of faith that stopped the sun. It came by hearing the face of Elijah that says, according to my word. It's the word. It's the word. It's the word. According to my word, there will be no rain or dew. All these years, he locked up heaven and then he went his way. And King Ahab could not open the door. I'm telling you, there is a key in your hand tonight. That when you lock, not even King Ahab can open that door. And when you are ready to open, you come again, you tell Obadiah, you said, Obadiah, go tell Ahab, Elijah is here. And then when Ahab comes, then you say, now the time has come. Think about somebody that has the key in his hand to control the nation. Even though he did not have the title, but he had the authority. The one that had the authority did not have the title. The one that had the title did not have the authority. And Elijah, Elijah was a man like that. He had the words. And faith coming by hearing the face of Elijah. It comes by hearing. And now David, here comes David, the champion Jews in the land. And he said, who is afraid of Goliath? Saul said, I am. Who is afraid of Goliath? His senior brother said, I am. Who is afraid of Goliath? All the nation of Israel said, we are. And he said, I am the only one in the nation not afraid of this uncircumcised man. He said, leave in my hand, I'll deal with him. And then he took five stones. He could have, take, he could have taken feathers. Because it's not the stone. It's not the feathers, it's the words of his mouth. He said, you come today, you come to me with spear and sword. I come to you, not with a stone, 
I come to you, not to a sling. I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel that you have defied. And then something entered into the head of that man. He brought him down. It's the word that brought him down. And in your life, every Goliath will come down in Jesus' name. Faith cometh. And faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. What if you will discipline yourself from today? And you say, I wake up in the morning. I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to sleep at night. I'm going to hear the word. And then while you are hearing that, faith cometh. Faith cometh. Faith cometh. Faith cometh. A deposit of faith in your heart every day, every morning, every evening. You are going to succeed in Jesus' name. Now, when it says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, how do, we, how do we deal with that? Number one, reach the word. Number one, reach the word. You know, God has favored us so much now. You have the word of promises. It's the checkbook of promises. It's a promissory note that God has given us. Number one, reach the word. Number two, hear the word. Hear the word. It's so wonderful now that you can even have the word on your telephone, on the iPad, on the iPod. You can have the word by you every time, reading it to you. And then you are hearing, read the word, hear the word. Number three, believe the word. Believe the word. You know, this is it's so, it's so important. Believe the word. How, let me come back again. How did I have fear? How did you have fear? Somebody told you something. When you see somebody like this, and he does this and does this, that fellow is from another world. And if that fellow does not want you to succeed in life, then you will not succeed. Then somebody else said the same thing. You know, if somebody acts like this and acts like this, and he says this and says that, and he tells you, you'll not succeed in life. Uh-uh. You'll not succeed. And they said it. The first time they said it, you say, me, I don't believe that. The second time they said it, you say, maybe this thing is true. The third time they said it, you say, are people so wicked? And the fourth time they said it, you say, is this the genesis of my problem? And the fifth time they said it, you say, ah, now I know. You go from awareness to assurance. And now you're very sure because you believe what they said. And what they said never began to take effect in your life until you believed it. If they said something negative and they said, so and so is after you, so and so is doing this. If you had a dream, negative dream, you wake up in the morning, you said foolish dream. How did I dream that? I ate too much pounded yam last night. That's what caused that dream. And that one, it's not going to happen to me. It's because of what I ate. I ate too late last night. That's why that happened. You didn't believe anything you saw in the dream. It will not happen. Because fear works by believing it. If you believe, it will work. If you don't believe, if they say Satan is after you, say me, not me. Out of all the millions of people in the world, Satan does not have any other person to chase after except me. How will he chase me? When he knows I have the name of Jesus, I have the Holy Ghost, and fire is burning around me. That is not true. If you say it is not true, it is not true. Said it is not true. But if they say so and so is after you, say, eh, eh. how did you know? Of course I know. Oh, thank you for telling me. Now I believe. And then you begin to chase shadows. Because you believe that thing. That's why it's working. But now come back to the word of God. You read it. You hear it. You believe it. Thank God I believe. I say thank God I believe. Number four, you study it. Study the word. Study the word. And go deep into that word. Because this is the very source of your life. If you're going to live in the fullness of the blessings of God, study the word. Number five, meditate on that word. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. You see, when they call you a bad name, you meditate on that. 
when the teacher says you cannot get any good grade out of this class you meditate on that when somebody said like daddy like son daddy never made it and you i'm looking at you you'll never make it you meditate on that when somebody said uh uh sit down there you don't know anybody if you don't know anybody in this land you're not going to get anywhere you meditate on that what you meditate on is what catches you what you meditate on is what binds you what you meditate on is what lifts you up and liberates you. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Then it says that thou mightest observe to do and to observe all that I command you because it is so in that way you will succeed, you are going to succeed. You will prosper, you are going to prosper. And you have good success in Jesus' name. Number one, what do you do with the word? Read it. Number two, what do you do with the word? Hear it. Number three, what do you do? Number four, what do you do? Number five, meditate. Number six, obey the word. Obey that word. Obey that word. To obey is better than sacrifice. Because that is how this faith is implanted within us. Number seven, preach it. Number seven, preach it or teach it. The same thing. Because the more you teach other people, the more you have assurance and conviction. The more you tell other people, the more it is engraved in your heart. You preach it. Number eight, multiply it. I'm going to read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 25. Verse 24, multiply the word. Multiply, multiply. I'm looking at Acts chapter 12, verse 24. But the word of God grew and uh, multiplied. How do I multiply the word? That is the same word. It's the same word. I give it to A, I give it to B, I give it to C, I give it to E. I, I keep on giving to them. I'm multiplying it. How can I do that today? You know, I have the, even if it's just Psalm 23, and then I send the recorded Psalm 23, I send it to your phone. And then I say, now this word is coming to you. And if you hear that every time that I've sent to your phone, send it to another friend. And then it goes to another friend. I say, that friend to send it to another friend again. It sends to another friend, that friend to send it to another friend. And then we're multiplying, multiplying the word. When you multiply the seed, you're going to multiply the harvest. And then there's going to be power generated in the hearts of many people. Multiply the word. Or maybe we'll just take a message like the message of faith. Like any of the messages we have, maybe just five minutes, something like a real dynamite that will blow away all the problems that people have. And then you put it on your own phone. You put it on your iPod, and then after you listen every time, you are going to eat, you listen. Are you going to do anything? You listen. The first thing you do in the morning, you listen. That word of faith, word of power, dynamite in your soul. And then that same thing that, has, that is helping and building you up, edifying you, making you to have faith, increasing your faith, making all your mountains to vanish away, send that to somebody else's phone. Let him also send that to somebody else's phone and multiply and multiply. Do you know, let, let, let's do some, you know, multiplication here. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Let's say, for example, now this month, you make up your mind that just five minutes message or 10 minutes message or 30 minutes message, whatever, that you have it on your phone. And I have a hundred people here that will say we're committing ourselves and i'm going to look for 10 friends 10 neighbors 10 relatives 10 believers they may be here in a chair they may be there all over and then i say this month i'm looking for 10 people this word of power and this word of healing and this word of assurance and this word of divine ability in man i'm going to send to 10 people remember i have a hundred people each of them they make up their minds i'll send this to 10 to 10 to 10 10 times 100 tell me what 1000 
and then so we have 1,000 people they have that word of faith and they're listening every day listening every time they're becoming giants in faith and then we say hey all those 100,000 of you month of September we're going to do something look for 10 friends 10 neighbors 10 relatives send the word to them on their phone and then 1,000 people, each of them 10, 10, 10, at the end of September, how many are we sending to? That's 10,000. End of October, how many people? 100,000. And end of November, how many people? Million people. And then at the end of December, how many people? Between now and December. If we just simple, it doesn't take you time. Or if it is text that you are sending, very simple, just take a minute. That word of power that will multiply, multiply, multiply the word. You are multiplying miracles. I said you are multiplying miracles. And when for you nothing shall be impossible. And then for them nothing shall be impossible. And then number nine, pray it through. Pray it through. That is the word. Remember where we are coming from? Read it. Remember? Hear it. Remember, believe it. Remember, study it. Remember, meditate on it. And then obey it, preach it, multiply it. Number nine, pray it through. Let me show you what I mean. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter seven. In Second Samuel chapter seven, you know, some people say, I don't know how to pray. Can I show you? Pray the word through. Pray the word through. Look at this. In Second Samuel chapter seven, verse 25. It says, now, O Lord God, the word, remember, that is it, the word, the word, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. You see that? That's prayer. Do as thou hast said. Open the word of God. Look at a promise and read it. Read it again. Read it again. Analyze it. Interpret it. Apply it to yourself. And then look up to heaven and say, oh, and say, oh Lord, the word which I've read just now, that you are preaching concerning me, that will happen to me, my spiritual life, my social life, my family life, my professional life, my ministerial life. Look at the word you have said. Do as thou hast said. Then you come in the evening before you, before you close your eyes and sleep. You look at that word again. Stay there and keep on digging. You see the people that get oil, they stay in one place and they dig. And they dig. And when they dig, you'll come across water. If you stop there, all you have is a well of water. But you keep on digging and keep on digging. You dig beyond having the water. And then you dig deep enough. You're going to get oil. As you dig into this world, you're going to have oil. I said you're going to have oil. And then you read that scene again. You say, oh Lord, see what you have said. Lord, do as thou hast said. You come the following day. Look at until that promise is fulfilled in your life. You stay there. You grab that thing. You explain that thing to yourself. You apply it to yourself. And say, oh Lord, the word that was spoken concerning your child, concerning me, your servant, that you will do this and do this, oh Lord, do as thou hast said. Number 10, act on it. Act on it. Read the word. Hear the word. Believe the word. Study the word, meditate on the word, obey the word, preach the word, multiply the word, pray the word through. And now number 10, act on it. I'm looking at Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, and I'm reading there from verse 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 5, Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing, nevertheless at thy word. You see that? Don't allow discouragement and don't make a conclusion that there are no fish in this river. There are no fish in this lake. 
don't say that. The Lord is saying, where you failed before, rise up and go and succeed. Where you got nothing before, rise up and get everything you ought to get. And the places you went before, and the place was dry. And the place had nothing at all. And you thought, while other people were sleeping, you are burning your candles, your candle at both ends. And even with the burning of the candle at both ends, you labored and you toiled and you caught nothing. And here you come tonight, and I say, and I'm saying to you, where there was failure, now there's going to be fruit. Where there's discouragement, now there's going to be an answer, accomplishment to your prayer in Jesus' name. Act on the word. Act on the word. So Peter said, nevertheless. At thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. You are now about to get into net breaking breakthrough. Because a time of faith, the era of faith, and the period of faith is starting in your life, starting in your family. And starting your church, impossibilities are becoming possible in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 25. For I am the Lord. You see the Lord? I said, you see the Lord? For I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. The word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It doesn't depend on your feeling. It doesn't depend on your ability. It doesn't depend on your past experiences. It doesn't depend on your talent. It doesn't depend on who you know or who you don't know. If God says it, if God affirms it, He says the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Then it says, and it shall no more be prolonged. For in your days, so rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, says the Lord God. Verse 28, therefore say unto them, thou saith, thus says the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done. The word which I have spoken shall be done. The word which I have spoken shall be done. Says the Lord God. It will be done. I said it will be done. And so when we come before God now, I want to pray. It's not, you know, it's not the gymnastics and all that that strengthens prayer. All God needs is God remind him of what he said. God, you know what you said? This is what you said. Do what you have said. Do as thou hast said. And then you close the chapter and say, I know Satan cannot be more powerful than you are. Do as you have said. I know that men and women cannot be more powerful than you are. Do as you have said. I know that my feeling cannot cancel your word. My emotion cannot cancel your word. Do as you have said. You are, you are in for a miracle. Point number two now. The faith that conquers the world. The faith that conquers the world. As we grow up in this world, you hear a lot of stories. And you hear from neighbors. You hear from the radio. Some people see it on the television. And some people see it on the internet. The world in which we live. And the more you think about the world, the more you understand that this world, there are some good things, there are some bad things too. And yet, for you to go through life, and all the bad things in the world will not, will not hinder your progress. All the things in the world, with all the powers in the world, will not stop, will not take 1% out of the success you ought to have in the world. Because there is a faith that conquers, that overcomes the world. And that is the faith you are going to have tonight in Jesus' name. The faith that conquers the world and conquers 
every sin in the world. We're looking at First John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, thank God I'm born of God. I said I am born of God. It says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. There is a faith that conquers the world and everything in the world. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. We are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Give me a good amen. amen. You know, if you wake up in the morning and say, praise the Lord, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Anybody I meet today, anybody I see today, no matter their height, no matter their stature, no matter their experience, no matter their background, no matter what power they boast of, greater I see that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm going for an interview. And no matter how ferocious and wild those people are, I'm going to stay there and I'm going to look at them eyeball to eyeball because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm going to make a demand of that director because I'm walking there. I've not been promoted all these years and now I know my promotion is not in their hand. Whatever is sitting on my promotion, I'm going to take that thing away today. And then I'm going to go to him and I'm going to say, here is my right. I want this right. I'm going to say it intelligently and wisely, but I'm going to say it because I know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And whatever it is, you know why people don't make any attempt? They won't even ask. They won't even demand anything. They're so much afraid. What if they say no? How can they say no when God has said yes? What if they deny me? How can they deny you when God says that is your portion? Your problem is you think that greater is he that is in the world than he that is within me. That's the real problem. Turn it around. And now understand greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, when you say it for the first time, it looks like what are you, who are you talking about? You say about myself. Do you believe that is true? You know, if somebody told you, you wake up in the morning and it says, why, is, why are your eyes reddish? What happened to you? You say, nothing happened. I'm all right. Then you meet the next person and it says, what's happening to you? Why are your eyes reddish? You say, is that so? All right. You will not even bother to go to the mirror and look because they are your mirrors. And then the third person says, why are your eyes ready? They say the same thing. By the time you eventually go to the mirror, the eyes really are ready. Because your emotion, your feeling, your anxiety, your worry has now gone into your blood system and your eyes really are ready. But when somebody said it the first time, nothing really happened until you believed it. The same thing with the word of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Maybe you don't believe it immediately. Say it again. Greater is he that is in me. Do it. Even if you don't believe it at present. Do it again and do it again. Eventually, the face of Elijah will come unto you in Jesus' name. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Don't you remember what happened to Moses? He ran away from Egypt. Why did he run away from Egypt? Because at that time, he believed greater is he that is in Egypt than the one inside me. And because the greater one is in Egypt, greater than the one inside me, that's why he ran away. And then eventually, day after day, the Lord appeared unto him and called him by name, Moses, Moses. He said, here am I, Lord. He said, I'm sending you back. In the process of time, he first began to say, I cannot, I will not, 
I must not because that man is greater than the one in me. And then he said, I am that I am. And then he went, who made the mouth all of a sudden as he continued conversing with the Lord. He just began to change the pendulum. The pendulum was swinging this way, but now the pendulum is swinging this way until he believed, now I can do it. Now you can do it. I said, now you can do it. And then he got there, the man that ran away some years ago. When he believed, greater is see that is in Egypt than the one inside me. Everything changed now. Greater is see that is in me than the one in Egypt. That's why he said, Pharaoh, I came to announce to you, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is that God that I should let the people go? And then Musi began to shake because now, ah, this is what I thought. That this man, greater I see that is in Egypt than the one inside me. And they went to God and said, God, I told the man and he questioned me. God said, go back again. And I'm telling you, go back again. When he got back, he said what he said again and Pharaoh said don't tell me that again I will not let the people go and then his story went on and on and on and eventually for the last time Moses went there and Moses said Pharaoh I came to tell you the language of the man has changed I told you practice makes perfection what did I say keep on saying the same thing to the same person to the same mountain that mountain will move you will not move but that mountain will what? will move he said Pharaoh I come to tell you if you don't do this this is what will happen eventually what he said will happen happened what you say will happen will happen I said it will happen. Eventually, they let them go. They will let you go. There's nobody here. If you follow this watch, that will be in any bondage that is permanent because deliverance has now come. And while they were by the Red Sea, here comes the man. Satan is stubborn. But faith is more stubborn. Demons are stubborn, but words of authority, they are more stubborn. And then, as Pharaoh was coming, look at all the Israelites. Those Israelites, they were where Moses was many years before. They believed that greater is sea that is in Egypt than the one inside them. So they began to cry, but Moses now, he was on this other side. He believed, what did he believe? What did he believe? What do you believe? So he said, These Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. Did it happen? It will happen again. I said it will happen again. Because it says in this verse 4, Greater, you see, that is in you than he that is in the world. First John chapter 2 verse 14. First John chapter 2. Let's read verse 13. Verse 13. I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. Young men, where are you? Young women, where are you? You have overcome. Yeah. You have overcome the wicked one in Jesus' name. Yeah. It says, I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. Verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have tell me overcome the wicked one you'll overcome in jesus name revelation chapter 12 
verse 11. Revelation chapter 12. I'm reading verse 11. It says in verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcame, we have overcome. Number one, the faith that comes by the word. Number two, the faith that conquers the world. Number three, the faith that continues his works. The faith that continues his works. Many people do not know that what Jesus did is what we're to continue. And we're to continue the works of Jesus, the signs and wonders of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the evangelization of Jesus, the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit of Jesus, the manifestation of power by the Spirit of God, what Jesus began to do, where to continue. And there is a faith that continues his work. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began, you see that? He didn't finish this. He finished the work of redemption. He died for salvation. Nothing can be added to that but preaching, healing, teaching, casting out devils, raising the dead. He started, but we are to continue the faith that continues its work of what Jesus began both to do and to teach what to do and to teach let's follow now the pattern of christ can i show you john chapter 5 john chapter 5 john chapter 5 verse 17 5 17 it says but jesus answered them my father walketh either true and i work how do you understand that my father walketh either true and then I pick it up from where my father stopped. And now I walk. And now Jesus Christ began what to do and to teach. And where Jesus has ended, then you pick it up. You continue by faith the works of Christ. Look at verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do. You understand that? He said, what I've seen the Father doing. I pick that up. I continue his work. And what the Father has been doing that I see. That's what I pick up. And what I am doing that you see. He says, that is what you have to pick up. It goes on to say, but it then says, For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Now he's transferring it to you. You are going to do the same work. John chapter 14 verse 12. John 14 verse 12. This is yours. I said this is yours. I said this is yours. Look up here for a moment. Do you remember when you, you will not remember? I'll tell you. When you were, for, when you were born. You didn't understand language. What did you know? Nothing. You didn't have any vocabulary. What did you know? Nothing. You didn't know what a house was, what a dog was. You didn't know who was Samuel. You didn't know what was Stephen. You didn't know what was whatever name. And then, as you were, you were still young, and on the eighth day, they said, Jacob, we make any meaning to you. The following day, mommy carried you and smiled. Jacob, he didn't understand, and then daddy came back from uh, from work and then patted him and said, Jacob, and then Jacob, Jacob, until one day they said, Jacob, then you turned, looks like they are calling me. How do you know that is your name? I just knew, I just knew because they said it and said it and said it until I, looks like it's me, they are calling Jacob. That's how you knew you are Jacob. That's how you knew your name. Originally, when they said, this is you, you didn't know. But they said it again. They said it again. They said it again. Until something inside you said, 
that is your name. What I'm going to read now, the first time I read it to you, you just look here and there. You don't know it's you. And then second day, I come again. I read it to you. You don't know that I'm talking about you. Then I read it again. All of a sudden, you look back. And you see that others are not paying attention. Looks like the pastor is talking to me. I'm talking to you tonight. I said I'm talking to you tonight. And then the next time you read it, say, that is my verse. That is my verse. John chapter 14, verse 12. I said, that is my verse. Look at what it says, John chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is yours. I said, this is yours. He that believeth on me, the works I do, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. What if I want to perform an experiment? And then I wake up tomorrow morning and before I brush my teeth, before I do anything, I open John 14 verse 12. Very late, very late I say unto you. And then I put my name there. He that believeth on me, I put my name there. The works that I do, he shall do. And greater works than this, that this shall he do. Because I go to the Father and say, praise the Lord, amen. That's my verse. Then I want to sleep at night and then I read it again. Very late, very late, assuredly I say unto you. He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And then I wake up the following day, and the following day, and the following And every day, every day, whatever I'm doing, I just read this and say, this is mine, this is mine. One day, then I see somebody lame by the roadside. And then my name, my title, my authority, my power, and my divine association comes to me. Very late, very late, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father, and I've been saying that to myself for six months every day until I saw that man on the side of the road. And I say, if Jesus came here today, what will he do to this man? He'll say, I say unto you, rise up. And he says, the work I do, he shall do also. And I say to that man, I say, rise up. What will happen? He'll rise up. That it doesn't happen tomorrow. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Because you say it, you say it, until you know this is my name. This is my right. This is my title. This is my power. This is my authority. Take the word of God. Once again, read it. Take the word of God. Hear it. Take the word of God. Believe it. Take the word of God and study it. Take the word of God. Meditate on it. Take the word of God and obey it. Take the word of God and preach it. Take the word of God and make sure that you're assimilating it all the time. Take that word of God and multiply it. Take the word of God and pray it through. Take the word of God and act on it. And from this day, nothing shall be impossible unto you. We're starting on a faith journey. And I want to tell you, on this faith journey, join the queue. There's Abel there. There's Enoch there. There's Abraham there. I see Sarah there. I see Ruth there. I see Jephthah there. I see Daniel there. Hey, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I see Elisha with a double portion there. I see Stephen there. Hey, that's Philip over there. That's Paul. He just came in. That's Peter over there. Let the people of God rise up and claim your right because we are on a journey. Come on with us now in the journey of faith. You are going to make it in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, possessing the faith that never fails. Possessing the faith that never fails. Possessing the faith that never fails. You will not fail, you cannot fail. On this journey, there's no failure. On the journey of faith, it's happening. It is happening. It is happening. The journey of faith. Possess that faith. Possess that faith. Possess that faith. The faith 
that never fails. The faith that never fails. You are the man. You are the woman. God has been waiting for you for a long time. The faith that never fails. That's your faith. Speak to that mountain. Don't cry about the mountain. Don't complain about the mountain. Don't murmur about the mountain. Don't blame anyone for the mountain. Don't research about the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. It shall be done. It shall remove. And nothing. And nothing. And nothing. Shall be impossible unto you. The faith that comes by the word. The faith that conquers the world. And the faith that continues his works. In Jesus' name we pray. And Elijah and Elisha said. And the Peters and the Pauls said. And the Deborahs and the Esthers said. It is none. I said it is none. You are not weak anymore. You are strong. You are not unbelieving anymore. And you are now believing. Something is going to happen tonight. If you believe that, can you raise those anointed hands up? Don't look back anymore. Don't look down anymore. Don't think of the failures of the past anymore. Don't think of the defeats of the past anymore. Whatever water has gone under the bridge, let go. Let go. Let go. Just, just forget about that. And say, this is the dawn of a new day. Of a new vision. Of a new revelation. And something good will now be happening to you every day. The past is gone. The future breakthrough is being burst in your life today. You are carrying something home today. A miracle with your name attached unto it. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Raise those hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray there will be giants in this church. Giants of faith. Giants in power. Giants in the spirit. No more grasshoppers in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all the failures of the past will be forgotten. All the defeats of the past will be forgotten. All the weaknesses of the past will be forgotten. Lord, I pray all the fears, anxiety, worry of the past is forgotten tonight in Jesus' name. Mountains will not terrify us anymore. Enemies will not afflict us anymore. Lord, concerning your people, I pray that a new anointing will come upon everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. The anointing that breaks the yoke. Yokes broken in every life. Yokes broken in every child. Yoke, yokes broken in every family. Lord, I present everyone here before you. Any long-standing problem, any long-standing mountain, any long-standing sickness, any long-standing infirmity, any long-standing bad luck, Lord, I speak to this mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every kind of affliction, bad luck, evil, curse, yokes, I break everything. I destroy everything. This is the word you have given. I will come to you tonight and we say, do as thou hast said. I pray, Lord, 
all those who have tried to get what you had for them and they always missed it this will be the year of their breakthrough begin O oh lord the year of miracle tonight for your people in jesus name you said there will be no one that will be barren among us all families who are here who are looking up to you for children lord miracle babies grant unto them in jesus name you said we will be head we will not be tail lord i pray those who have certificate but it's no job they have experienced profession but there is nothing to do open the door for them doors of opportunities open for them in jesus name and lord i pray the signs that will follow believers these signs shall follow them that believe in your name they'll cast out devils they speak with new tongues if they drink any deadly poison it will not hurt them all the serpents and snakes and scorpions they'll throw them away when they lay their hands on the sick they shall recover let those signs and wonders be multiplied in this church in jesus name lord i pray a definite miracle tonight for every brother every sister every leader every worker every member every boy and every girl miracles that their names are attached to give to everyone tonight in jesus name do something definite do something definite do something definite in every life in jesus name and lord i pray this faith that never fails impart to the heart of everyone when we come back again another time it will be a time of sharing of great great marvelous testimonies we know you have answered you will do as you have said you will not fail you cannot fail we receive the blessings for all your people thank you lord for everything in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray lord i believe lord i believe lord i believe god is still on the throne he will remember his own he has remembered you